Good evening, and welcome to Voice of the Parrot. I'm your host, Shasta Ray, and I am alone in the studio tonight for a multitude of reasons. Oh my gosh, holy cow, it has been quite the surreal week without my little micro dog. Holy cow, that little dog has been so intertwined into my day-to-day life. I didn't realize exactly how bonded I was with her. It has been difficult. I was grieving pretty hard until about the fifth day. And I'll tell you what, Murray, the baby cockatiel, has sensed this and he has been just completely glued to me to unreal proportions. (laughs) So I got him in the bird room. I was going to bring Zoltan down here, but trying to get Zoltan out of the bird room while leaving Murray in the bird room, it just doesn't happen. And I just cannot have that cockatiel down here because he destroys everything. Oh my goodness. He loves to attack things that he thinks are my toys, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, Anyway, yeah, it's been quite an adjustment period this past week, and things are looking up, things are better. We got past the dark cloud part of it, and that's just a part of having animals. If you love them, your heart gets intertwined with theirs, and when they go, you feel like a big hole has been blasted right through you, and make sure you you are good to yourself if you're experiencing something like that. And on the flip side of it, if you know of anyone that is going through that, make sure you check in on that person a little bit, because uh, I think it's very easy for us to discount the grieving process of pets, like we give credit where credit's due and it's close family members, but people think, ah, it was just a dog or cat or bird or hamster or whatever it was, but they don't really understand how deeply we love these little creatures that work their way into our day-to-day lives and make our days sunnier, right? So anyway, we've all been making that adjustment and Giant Dog has been kind of glued to me a little bit more than normal. We've been trying to take a few extra walks here and there and uh, it's been it's been an adventure. At any rate, We have still been welcoming some new listeners from new countries. It has been a very, very slow ramp up. I'm not going to lie. It's difficult this time around with this podcast simply because the bird groups that exist tend not to allow people to self-promote. So I can't get the word out about it without getting kicked out of groups. So What I want to ask all of you is if you are in bird groups or you like to share on social media, if you think that this is a good podcast, it's been helpful, it's fun to listen to, it's entertaining, it's just bird themed and therefore just good vibes, feel free to share that. And you can just do the direct link to the website, which is voiceoftheparrot.show. And all of the episodes can be listened to for free there. I am also wherever you listen to podcasts. I'm pretty much on every major podcast app at this point. So I can be found very easily and abundantly, but I am having a hard time finding an abundance of you folks. So if you could pass the happy news along, it would help out the podcast and show your support. I also have a YouTube channel. Most people probably know about that. You can just do a search for Voice of the Parrot And I post all of the podcast episodes on the YouTube channel as well. So it's another great way to find me and listen in every week. Plus, a lot of people are just on YouTube. Now, on the topic of YouTube, I want to mention and the podcast, Google Podcasts is going to be going away. So if you listen on Google Podcasts, That app is going to die off sometime in the near future, and I'm not sure when that is scheduled. However, since YouTube is directly connected in with Google, it's part of that whole system, the plan is, as I understand it, they'll be doing a YouTube podcasts, so it's going to replace Google podcasts. I'm not sure how that's going to transition no knowledge on that, but if I hear about anything or as soon as I do, you'll be the first to know. I'll keep you up to speed. But brace yourself if you are a Google Podcast fan. And then last but not least, I have been getting really busy with the Etsy shop. I'll put a link in the show notes for that. It will be a direct link. And you can use the promo code WELCOME 
for a nice healthy discount off of your entire purchase order. All sales totaling over $35 get free shipping, so that's always nice. So if you buy a few things, you'll get free shipping off everything. And I am learning how to do all the graphic work, all of my own mock-ups. Oh my gosh, it is a process, people. It is a very big, steep learning curve for old people like me. Holy cow. At any rate, all purchases from the Etsy shop directly support the podcast and I am breaking out of just bird-themed items that I'm offering. I'm starting to offer some other popular animals. I'm not sure what I do or don't have uploaded at this point, but I'm getting kind of a little bit crazy on the product release this week, so make sure you favorite that shop and take a look. I've got all sorts of stuff coming out. I've got some tumblers, and I have not started really on the t-shirt production yet, but I'm ramping up to start releasing some really amazing t-shirt and sweatshirt designs and really fun stuff, and it will just keep expanding, so keep checking back often as the inventory will be changing and expanding. I'm also going to have digital download products I'm working on some publications with coloring books, both for kids as well as grown-ups, and, and a few other things up my sleeve for the future. Most of those at this point in time in 2023 are kind of on the agenda for the 2024 year, so we'll see what happens. It's a lot to do, and then I'm working full-time on top of it, so... It's tough, but it's a labor of love, and I'm really having fun learning how to make stuff. Go take a look. And the tumblers are to die for. Oh my gosh. If you like a little, like a, the smaller uh, wine tumblers, they're insulated. And I did not realize this, but you're not supposed to put them in the dishwasher. And I have put mine through the dishwasher, I don't even know how many times, dozens at this point, and it looks brand new. So the quality of print is amazing. I found a production partner that I trust and that does very, very high quality work. I set everything up and then they just manufacture my products exactly to my specs. What do we have for you this week? We're going to keep it short and simple and I'm going to maybe start doing a little bit of this every month or so for a while. We'll see where it goes. But Diet is such a big, major part of bird ownership, and I think a lot of people just don't put any effort into it, and then they wonder what happened to their birds. So here's the thing. I only really have experience with the small guys, so the parakeets and now a cockatiel, and they have a very, very similar diet, right? You do not want to just take a pet store's advice and just give them bird seed. The problem with this is that it is a natural food to them. They are kind of imprinted in their brains to gravitate towards this, and it's what their preference is. So they're going to like that first and foremost. However, we're keeping them in captivity, and even if you have a fully flighted bird, it is not going to get anywhere close to the same amount of exercise in your home. I don't care if it's flapping around all day. It is not flying for miles and miles and miles and foraging for its food and having to deal with temperature changes and everything that goes with living in the wild. They burn tons and tons and tons of calories. I think Giant Dog just came down here. And they need some of those extra fats and calories that are packed into seeds for all that energy expenditure. They simply do not engage in that in our homes. So it's a better idea to get them on a good amount of fresh produce, chop, vegetables, leafy greens, that sort of thing, and then also a very high quality organic pellet. I feed mine two different brands of pellets, and I have been doing research since I got Zoltan, so on my way to two years. So I'll do a different presentation on the bird pellets that I have learned are the only ones I'll buy. And then for today, I'm going to talk about a little bit of getting your birds on greens and things like that, gravitating to those of you out there with the budgies and cockatiels and those 
smaller little birds. I don't have any experience with any of the other, you know, the parrotlets or lovebirds or anything, but I would imagine it's similar across the board. You got to find what works and you got to use a healthy dose of patience because getting them to try new things can be challenging and there's a few tricks to make it go a little easier, but one thing you can do is a couple of jars or sprouting systems for sprouting your own seeds. And then don't forget to do wheatgrass. So grab some uh, sprouting seeds off of Amazon. I get a big mix where it's got radish and broccoli, clover, alfalfa, everything that I can find. I use some sunflower seed, lettuces, all kinds of stuff. And then the wheatgrass I sprout separately. But people really trip up on this. They make it harder than it needs to be. And it is one of the best, most amazing, cheap, holy cow, simple ways to get high potency greens and high potency vegetable matter into your birds. And they really like it. One of the natural things for them is to eat sprouts in the springtime and stuff. You'll always see this with chickens and other birds when they start foraging for spring, especially those of you that have ever planted a garden know the woes of having birds eat all of your little sprouts that are coming up. So it is one thing that they do like. They love sprouted seeds. They love sprouts. And they're very easy, 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 and inexpensive to grow. You will have a very huge supply of greens for very little money if you get into the habit of doing your own sprouts. Do a little homework on the subject yourself. You can find different suggestions on different seeds to sprout for your birds. But in a nutshell, what I have found works best for seed sprouting is if you get a jar, and I use just a smaller little pint 16-ounce mason jar, and you can get these little screen lids specifically for sprouting. So I take no more than about a half a tablespoon of seeds. It's not much. It's like a teaspoon and a half, maybe two teaspoons. Put that in there. Submerge them in, in nice cool water. Give them a good rinse, but let them sit that way for a few hours in water, okay? And keep that screen lid on it. And then after they've been like that in the water for anywhere from two to 12 hours, you can leave them in there all day if you need to. Drain that off, shake it really good, and let it sit, and in the morning, you're going to rinse it again, drain the water off, and you're going to do that in the evening also. So you're just going to rinse them twice a day and make sure to get that excess water out. And then I always kind of tap it so all of the seeds kind of stick to one side. Then I lean it the opposite direction so if there's excess water that needs to run off of them, they tend to stick to the glass, and then the water will accumulate underneath where they're not just submerged in that water. And they'll start sprouting little tails on them within a day. Usually you'll see that. I tend to let mine get to the point where they have little green leaves before I feed them. And then I just mix it in with their food or their chop. And boy, they go crazy on that sometimes. You can easily grow them and start a new batch every three days or so. So you always have the right sprouts at the right stage of development for your personal preferences. And here again, it's very easy. It doesn't really take up much space and it doesn't take up a lot of time. The amount of time it takes to pour a little bit of water into the jar, swish it, and then dump it off seconds, right? Seconds. And then you've got some really great sprouts. Mine absolutely go bonkers over wheatgrass. Oh my gosh. And as soon as they start sprouting the little green sprouts on them. I start feeding them on up to when the grass gets to about six inches. And when it gets longer, I just chop it up into their chop with scissors just and um, they'll eat it that way. But I give it to them just in its natural state also because they like to play with it. They like to chew on the green part. And then some of them like to chew on the seed and the root part too. There are tons and tons of enzymes and all kinds of nutrients. Sprouts are very, 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 very nutrient and enzyme dense. This is amazing for anyone that eats them. 
And if you're a big salad person or you're looking to up your health game for yourself personally, you can eat them also. You can put them in salads, you can put them on a sandwich, all sorts of stuff, and the health benefits are through the roof. So give it a try. If you're a little uneasy or you're unsure of yourself, just do some searches online. You can find all sorts of stuff on YouTube. Everything is out there. There's tons and tons of free resources everywhere you look. So give it a try and treat your birds to some fresh organic sprouts. Oh my gosh, that's all I got for you this week. I will talk a little bit more about some ideas with CHOP, how to make some stuff, how to see what works, what doesn't work, what to stay away from as time moves forward. I probably won't do it as a series. I'll probably just pop in with some nutrition advice here and there. And then, of course, as I learn, I will always keep presenting new stuff. Please, please, please always do your research on the type of bird you have because some of these birds are very, very unique in their nutritional needs. So here again, do your research, but try to get your birds eating as much green vegetables as possible and then a wide color of vegetables because different colors have different properties with the nutrients and the micronutrients and all that good stuff. So feed them good stuff and then always make sure you are aware of what not to feed them. And a couple of the big ones that come to mind in the moment are anything in the garlic family and the onion family. You don't want to feed those to your birds. Stay away from avocados. Stay away from mushrooms. I believe you're not supposed to give them any kind of mushrooms or fungus. And then there are certain types of pits to stay away from. Like you don't want to give them the pits out of apricots or peaches. So here again... Do your research and make sure that you're double checking before you feed anything to your birds. Also, stay away from any kind of human food with artificial sweeteners in it. Do not, under any circumstances, feed your birds anything with artificial sweeteners. And on that subject, be very well aware of the fact that there are some peanut butter companies out there that are sweetening their peanut butters with xylitol. Xylitol works good for human beings. It does not work for other animals. It is highly toxic to your dogs, your cats, your birds. Make sure you stay away from anything with xylitol in it. Oh my gosh, the dangers are so abundant. And they seem like healthy choices when you're a human being. So be double careful. All right, that's all I got for you this week. Have a great week, everybody. Go have fun with your birds. Try feeding them something new, something different. And stay safe and have a great week. Bye-bye.